Welcome back to another episode of Heels Up. I am Vlad St. Valentine. With me is my hostess with the mostest, Mr. Cayman Ramos. How's it going? You saw the day in paradise about yourself. <sighs> it's starting to get cold. I'm not, I'm not a fan of cold. No, well, you know what? I'll tell you what. You can have some of my body fat. I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> You're going to take it from me like fucking seven style, aren't you? <laughs> Imagine it. There's a gun in your face. Which part of your body is expendable? How about the love handle? Maybe this is a bad idea. So, no, no, no. Ba basketball style, the, the s s sucking the fat through the... Oh, this guy ate a lot of pork. Fat liposuction down of Marlon Brando's ass. Oh, oh, no. What am I doing here? Oh. Oh, it's all salty and warm. <laughs> so welcome to the first uh, Heels Up kind of week review. This is the new style of show we're doing where we're going to just kind of bring you the highlights from Raw and SmackDown and the news from the week all in one giant epic package. You know about epic packages, right? Yeah, they uh, they cost a lot to ship. Oh, I, I I was just referring to how you made your way through college. Lots of damage. Oh, no. uh, What's don't... that? Lots of damage. It's not as lucra lucrative with Ozling fans now than it was back in the day. <sighs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, you think everyone just thinks they can be a fucking porn star, you know what? They take away from the real struggling porn stars out there. You know what, guys? Like, support a real porn star and go check out cadengangbang.com. You're going to do what you got to do. Cadenspidermonkeygangbang.com. Those spider monkeys are hard workers, I'll tell you what. Yeah, their union is <laughs> top-notch union. Well, you know, you get a hundred monkeys in a, in a room with a tight fire. They're about to come up with some good union rules. Didn't uh, Tom Morello play their last gathering? Possibly. I think so. So Rod this week kicked off with Randy Orton in the ring, basically talking about how he's the greatest and said anyone who wants to come try and take this belt from him is welcome to. And surprise, surprise, Alexa Bliss comes out rocking her new white fiend gloves, one that yep. says play, one that says pain. <laughs> awesome. Puts the gloves up, you know, all dolly style, then puts down the play hand. Randy's like, all right, where the hell is he? But instead, Drew shows up and kicks him in the face. So, like, is Drew in cahoots with the Fiend or just taking advantage of a I think, spot? I think he's just taking advantage of it. And what was the plan then otherwise? Was she just going to be out there and be creepy and the Fiend wasn't going to show up? Were they just, like, were they just hoping that, that, that Drew came up and did the Fiend's dirty work for him? Or? I think so. I think it's just trying to get into uh, Drew's head, or not Drew's head, Randy's head. I guess. Just, like... If if Drew doesn't show up, the whole thing just kind of falls flat for the Fiend and Alexa, unless the Fiend was planning on showing up. In which case, the Fiend's probably under the ring going, "Oh fuck, I'm gonna do shit now." Okay, yeah. well, that's fine. I'll take a nap. Sitting here near the payday bar or whatever he does. He seems like the kind of asshole we did a payday bar. Fuck paydays. You just don't like nuts. I, well, that. But I also don't like anything that doesn't have chocolate on it. If it's not chocolate, it's not dessert. Yeah, it's just the Snickers without the chocolate. Yeah, exactly. The best fucking part. Or the nougat. No, they have nougat in... No, it's just caramel with fucking uh, penis wrap around it. No, it's nougat, caramel, and... Is it really? Yeah. Okay, well, I guess it's, I know. It's I'm exactly the, the same thing, except it's a it? chocolate. It's quite the stranglehold. Either way, it sucks. <laughs> it's a piece of shit, and... It's just more peanuts instead of chocolate. After Drew kicks Randy's head in, though, Miz and Morrison decide they're going to come out and cash in, but... Drew doesn't even let him get started with it because he's like, no, I'm the only one taking the, the belt off Randy. And so he just kicks the teeth in of Morrison and mm, Miz. Miz yeah. I, funny. I understand that feeling. He's like, no, 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 no. He's, I'm the one that's going to beat this motherfucker. So good on it, man. He's yep. it, he's still showing up in badass credits. So I just I want him to have a solid win over Randy to finish this off to like establish him and put him over the top as like the badass yeah. going forward. Because, again, I think you'll get him over as the top guy quicker than you can get over fucking Roman Reigns, which took you, what, six or seven failed years until you decided to make him a heel? Not even that. He got over with cancer. Uh, ooh. Guys, I think we better stay out of this one. Yeah, this is starting to look like something we shouldn't be any part of. Let's go play with trucks or something. Also on Raw Night, we got a tag team championship match, a women's tag team champion match, which, uh, you know, Nia and Shayna taking on the new tag team of Mandy and Dana. Mm -hmm. And they beat him pretty handily. So. What do you what do you do with a bunch of this? They've run through all the other women's tag teams. You broke up the iconics like uh, Natty and uh, Lana. You, you split up. So like, who do who do Shayna and Nia take on now? 
Uh, nobody, unless they're going to plan on bringing up somebody from NXT. Yeah, you 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 blew it too early by having them face those two because like you built these these two to be the new tag team, so you figured you would give them a couple more weeks of winning, and then a, a title shot at a pay per view where you know win or lose, whatever they've at least built up for a couple weeks before you fed them to the big dogs and have them get their ass kicked. But such is life. I don't, again, I don't know where the hell you're going with this. So good luck. We get another Survivor Series qualifying match, triple threat match with Braun Strowman taking on two members of the team already in Keith Lee and Sheamus. AJ kind of, you know, proposed this match when all three men were out there talking shit to each other and AJ was trying to keep the peace, you know? Yeah. So he, so he uh, seems. Yeah. Well, you know, he's, he's doing his best, I suppose. But Braun pins Sheamus with the running power slam and he's now Team SmackDown. And that's... Team Raw. Or sorry, Team Raw. Ooh, I'm, I'm mixing it up now. Is that everybody for Team Raw? So far, yes. Okay, so that's four members of Team four, Raw. Four for Raw. Now they, you know, afterwards, AJ tries to all shake hands and Keith and Braun shake hands and then Sheamus and Braun hug after a bit of shit talking, but it's all ruse. Sheamus broke kicks Braun. Keith barrels Sheamus out of the ring. AJ drop kicks Keith out of the ring while screaming, why can't we just get along? What's wrong with you guys? It was pretty funny, actually. Yeah, yeah it's hilarious. AJ is, is good at the clueless bitchy heel. I think he just doesn't give a fuck anymore. Like he's on the last of his contract, so he's just gonna have a good time. Yeah, fuck it. He's got the money. You know what? If he's not, if he's gonna get to the I don't give a fuck stage like Nakamura did, at least he's doing more on camera than Nakamura is doing. Yeah, that's very very true. Nakamura is just like paycheck surf, paycheck surf, which I can't, I can't blame him. I flew all the way here for this. You know what? Extended vacation. Yeah. Does it look like the fact that they don't really get along well going to have an effect on the match? Well, they're playing that from both sides, and we'll get to SmackDown later. And both teams have dissension in them. But, I mean, because you're getting a lot of guys together who don't like each other. And ultimately, one of the criticisms with the uh, Survivor Series team brand versus brand thing has been, why would these guys care about their fucking brand loyalty? Like, it doesn't really matter ultimately to their career or who they are. So why would once a year they decide all of a sudden that they have some sort of, you know, team yeah. spirit, especially when they get traded once a year, you know, which is true. It doesn't make any sense. And having it be, you know, one guy being like, I want to win this thing because the match means something to me. And the rest of the guys just can't get along because, again, they shouldn't be able to get along. It makes sense. Yeah. So it works. And it works that both sides are doing it. So one side doesn't have a clear leg up for the pay-per-view. Gotcha. Nice. It'd be a little bit more different if there, you know, were benefits to winning, like yeah, you yeah, more title opportunities or whatever. Like, um, maybe the <laughs> the winning team, uh, that brand gets thirty for the Royal Rumble. Yeah, you sure it's a it's a it's a somebody from that team yeah. is assured to get the thirty number, spot number thirty. Or yeah, yeah, or the winning team get to be in a. Um, the winning team gets to be the five men in the uh, elimination chamber against the champion for their brand. Yeah, that makes sense too. Since that's right after. That'd be a hell of a, that'd be yeah. a hell of a prize to try and capture. You, all five members of the team get a chance the, at the championship. I make so, it happen. Yeah, give it reason. Sold. So we get a new episode of the Firefly Funhouse tonight with Alexa and Bray. Basically, this this the only reason we're still tuning in. Yes, is it, essentially. Alexa Bliss is keeping us watching Raw, so. But uh, in this episode, we get um, Abby, who starts out cussing. <laughs> she has to go and uh, pay 10 cents to the swear jar. She tells Alexa to go and fuck herself. <laughs> Bray's like, oh, no, that's 25 cents now. So then Bray goes in and starts talking about how uh, Randy better watch out because, you know, he's done things in the past and burned stuff down. We get flashbacks to the burning. Yeah, he starts off talking like, oh, that's in the past. I'm going to forgive. And just mid, mid-sentence mid just kind of stops and starts. We get kind of flashbacks to Randy burning the place down and him standing with his arms up in victory in front of Sister Abigail's house as it burns. And Ray's just like, unfortunately, it's not that simple. He never forgets. Cool scene. Uh, and then Alexa's like, oh, before we go, I've got a trick I want to show everybody. Bray puts the heel hand over her and... She all of a sudden has contacts on and spits out a fruit by the foot. Which, honestly, the most amazing thing about that was the fruit by the foot, because I didn't know you can get those anymore. Yeah, I thought they just dis- dis- get those, those still. I yeah. didn't think so, but apparently she found them. Vince has got the hookup, I guess. Well, hey, up in Michigan, they sell Surge. Oh, 
Oh, bring us some surge next time. I haven't had that since like seventh grade. Real quick, what's the line of table count this week? Seven. Table count seven. Fuck you, Mira. Mira was actually proud of that. He tweeted out, he's like, hey, my wife's a world record holder. She's nobody's tougher than her. <laughs> God bless Miro for making the best of a bad situation, which he's he's learned to do since he worked in the WWE. Yeah. So finally on Raw tonight, we've got the Hurt Business beating the New Day in a non-title match, which, of course, sets up, you know, a legitimate contender for the tag team titles. Uh, you know, will that weigh on the champs' heads going into Survivor Series, or will the Hurt Business take the titles from them before Survivor Series, you know? Which I hope they don't, because I do want to see a, a New Day versus Street, Street Profits. Profits match. Oh, yeah. But I, I'm not opposed to seeing the Hurt Business collect as much gold as possible. It'll be a shame if it's at New Day's, you know, expense, but they don't necessarily need the titles. Well, I take that back. I kind of think they do, really, because they've been around so long, and E's the one getting the push now. Yeah. In order to keep them from being stagnant, having them be the champs is the thing that makes them continue to be relevant, or at least floating around there. Maybe you can pass it back and forth between the two a couple times or something. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm hard-pressed <laughs> to pick a, a way to go on this one. Uh, I think it was definitely a plus for her business, especially how they've been on, like, the not great end of things recently. I don't think they look bad. I think they've been looking fairly dominant. Bobby's looking like a monster the way he's, he should have been looking like Brock Lesnar since the day he got in there. I wanted to see him versus Brock in a even match. Speaking of Lashley, he's a new 24 seven champion. Yeah. Uh, he's got two titles. <laughs> yeah. Having Lashley, uh, hold titles, MVP. <clears throat> you know, I'd like to see Lashley move up to the, the world, to the heavyweight championship and, you know, maybe he passes that US uh, US championship to just hands it to MVP. Yeah. Like he should hold it that long until you have time for him in the title picture. Have him win it and just pass it. Because that'll be great for MVP to be flexing with that belt he didn't win. Oh, that'll be great. Yeah. Oh, that'd be great. And then, you know, Shelton and Cedric the Entertainer holding the tag titles. Yeah. I would be okay with them winning at the same time. I don't know if it's, I don't, I, even though they're the new team on the block, they, they don't necessarily need it as bad as New Day does. Even it seems, contradictory or it seems counterintuitive i should say but yeah maybe maybe just keep it on new day until the new year maybe have them go for it at either rumble or elimination chamber maybe give them one more long run where it looks like they're gonna make another record thing and then yeah. take it off them or something have them be something else significant though to show that they're yeah just let them be up there for a while because yeah. i don't i don't want to see the new day go away completely they're amazing and plus like they gotta sell you a bunch of shit to kids right they're bright they're colorful they're fun like yeah Kids love that shit. Mm-hmm. Kids are stupid. So SmackDown this week started off with Sasha Banks taking on Bayley, defending her SmackDown Women's Championship match. Good match, but since it wasn't a pay-per-view, Sasha was able to retain. Yeah. And they went quite a long time. Yeah, this pretty much ate up the first half of SmackDown, which was good because the rest of it was filled with montages and clips from the other weeks and other shows. Like, I remember at one point in time, just like, well, this is a fucking clip show or something. Yeah, It was a little bit much as far as that goes, but at least we got a really good long women's match before this. And I so. swear that match lasted half of the episode. It did. It, yeah. It, it was a good hour. It seems there's like, at least three commercials 40, during it. 45 minutes. Yeah. It went yard and it was pretty good. So I, I, I know that we complain about having Bailey and Sasha all the time, but I like watching them when they get really, Long matches. No, we complain about the storyline going on too long, not their wrestling. They're great and entertaining wrestlers. The fucking storyline's been drug out way too long. Yeah. Though. I didn't mind it being drug out a little bit and the slow burn over time, but it's you just let it go in like a month too long. All right. You had got it went on for like what a year plus? Yeah, I think so. I think the entire time Bailey had her championship. Yeah. I mean, well, even before that was it started off when they got into a fist with each other backstage and then hung and made up and started being friends again and started yep. tagging together. That's how long this has been going on. The will they, won't they break up sort of thing. So it, it was time for it to be done months ago. But we're here and we're doing it. And we got the blow off tonight, I guess, so Sasha can concentrate on... Carmella, who showed up tonight. Wearing one of Corey Graves' outfits, as you said. Yeah. So Baron Corbin beats Rey Mysterio to join the SmackDown Survivor Series team. Uh, Rey lost because of family drama bullshit on the outside. I don't really give a fuck about this. I honestly don't. Yeah, we're done. But it'll come back again later because fuck us, right? Yep. Rey lost tonight? Mm. Yes. Yeah, yeah Rey lost to... to uh, I missed that. Sorry. Guys, King Corbin. Miles <laughs> is here. Uh, 
running producer no, since Reggie's not with us tonight and Miles doesn't really watch wrestling a whole lot. So I've had two waves of wrestling watching, you know, it was, you know, Hulk, the undertaker, Randy Macho Man Savage and the dude, Stone Cold Rock, you dude, know, the attitude era. You're yeah. you're the Frodo Baggins but, here, man. You're the intro <laughs> for people who don't know this stuff into the world here. You ask the questions hey, that the people want to know. I'm learning by hey, the second. It's fine. I'm proud of you. So we get another qualifying match for the women's SmackDown Survivor Series team. It's a triple threat match. Natty Nyhart's getting her second shot. They're taking on Zelina, or she's taking on Zelina Vega and Ruby Riot. She actually gets Zelina Vega in the sharpshooter, but Ruby comes and puts an arm bar on her and Natty lets it go right when Zelina taps out. So Ruby steals the win. Natty loses out twice in a row. Uh, and Ruby's part of the team. Yeah. I don't uh, know why Raw is not doing qualify matches. I mean, well, I guess Lana did, didn't she? But the, with the seven tables. <laughs> so we get another survivor series men's qualifying match with Seth Rollins taking on Otis. Otis has had this run of bad luck lately. I'm guessing uh, with everything they've taken away from him, they're, they're giving him the old Zack Ryder here. Yep. He got over and they decided they didn't like that. So let's take away his girlfriend. Let's take away his tag team partner. Let's take away his mind the bank contract and let's have him get beat tonight. Cause old set the boy beats him It's a little bit of a distraction from Murthy or Murthy. <laughs> Murthy. I, I kind of like that. But Seth wins tonight with a little bit of help from Murphy. Who's on the outside, just kind of staring stoically, but that distracts Otis long enough to get kicked in the face and stomped. So, Seth joins your Survivor Series team, and afterwards, Murphy's in the back saying, you know, I'm I'm your disciple, and they kind of look like they rejoin, and Seth fucks off, and Aaliyah runs up, and she's all pissed off and slapping Murphy. He's like, hey, you know, trust me, trust me, it's fine. It's for the greater good. So is he rejoining as a double cross? Is he playing the double agent here, or is he actually come back around? Now he's trying to twist her back into it. We'll see where it goes, but I don't really care that much, so. I don't either, but I'm thinking this is going to be a shot at Jericho. With the whole, this, he made it a point to say Messiah, disciple. But, you know, Jericho has the Judas effect. Oh. Murphy might be the Judas. Uh, okay, that's a stretch. I don't think they're that clever. <laughs> they do anything to get back at AEW. That's fair enough. And they've done multiple matches weeks after AEW's done them. Well, you've got to be more blatant, though. They're not that clever. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying they're not petty. I'm just saying they're not clever. <laughs> We close the night with a little bit of Anawaii family drama. Early in the night, KO had gone to talk to Jay because they're on the Survivor Series team together. And he tried to, you know, be a little lighthearted, make some jokes, which, you know, family didn't take too well. So we got Jay taking on KO at Roman's insistence, which KO is holding his own until, you know, Roman's music and Paul Heyman coming out there kind of caused enough of a distraction for Jay to take advantage, hit a low blow and beat KO, you know, his, mm -hmm. his partner in the upcoming, you know, Survivor Series match, but family's more important, right? So Roman comes out, pats on the back there, I look proud. Just more, you know, of the the continuing, you know, putting Jay in his place. He got in trouble earlier for doing an interview without telling Roman or getting his permission first. So yeah, we're, 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 we're seeing what the boundaries are for these guys now that they're uh, indentured servants, as Paul Heyman called it. Uh, it's mildly interesting. It's probably the most interesting thing going on Raw or on SmackDown since, you know, Drew and The Fiend are the best things in wrestling right now. Yeah. They're both on Raw, so. Yeah, definitely top two storylines. Are they still doing the the whole manatee strategy? Manatee strategy? Yeah. Roll-ups. We haven't had a lot of roll-ups lately. No, 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 we haven't. Yeah, it's so much so that I forgot what you were talking about. <laughs> well, Nikki Cross hasn't been wrestling a lot. That's so true. there's that. That's true. Yeah. So for news in this week, did you hear that WWE stopped uh, trademarks on two different wrestlers names like people who were already signed or what's the deal uh no 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 uh people who don't no longer have contracts with WWE. okay ex superstars who are trying to trademark yeah names or like like was it like variations of their wwe name or their yeah. wwe name it was their wwe name actually it's a uh, cody's name cody was one of them cody rhodes oh yeah i heard they tried to get cody rhodes i heard they dropped that one though. they dropped that one and then they dropped brock lesnar's oh yeah why would you isn't that his real name I think so, yeah. Oh, who gives? But yeah, they they dropped the trademark for those two. So yeah, I mean, trying to get trying to get the Rhodes name from them. Like, look, okay, no matter how much animosity you have towards Cody for starting this thing, and how much shit you put the Rhodes family, you humiliated the Rhodes family every opportunity you got. 
you put Dusty Rhodes in polka dots. You put Dustin in the gold dust outfit. And he made it work. You put Cody in Stardust. Like you've tried everything you can to humiliate them. Just give them their fucking namesake, man. Yeah. Yeah, that's just that's enough. Enough. Just don't play that dirty. Just let them have their namesake. What you got? Uh, also, this week, uh, Wednesday night on NXT, there was a uh, Killian Dane got pretty injured in the parking lot brawl with the uh, the kings of NXT, Pat McAfee's new faction. Legitimately injured or kayfabe? Uh, legitimately injured. He's not medically cleared. What happened? Uh, he got his head smashed in a car. Oh shit! Yeah, he he pulled a he pulled a Goldberg, but with a head instead of a forearm. Yeah, yeah that's not recommended. Not rec- like you saw how bad it went for Goldberg's forearm. You, your fucking head's much more tender. Don't do that shit. Yeah. I know you're trying to get over, but to what, to what avail? You can make the main roster and Vince doesn't know what to fucking do with you and you're gone in a few months. Like, don't, don't try that hard. Yeah. Just enjoy your time in NXT and, and enjoy yourself. Yeah. Let Nikki bring home the big bucks. <laughs> what else you got? All right. Also, last uh, rumor for WWE uh, Royal Rumble. Plan is at their next. Royal Rumble instead of doing a non quarantined uh, Thunderdome like they normally do. They actually want people there for the pop for everybody. So even if it's just that one event, that's what they're shooting for is to have people for that. Yeah, no. No, don't do that. It's not worth it. Don't do that. You don't just because you want noise? Fuck you. No. Don't just like let's. The reason why this is all being drug out is because people are taking these little <laughs> asinine baby steps towards it. Like we could have been like some of the other countries and been done with quarantine by now. Don't me wrong. Selfishly, I hope it never ends because I love working from home and not having to leave my house. I'm a homebody. This fucking fits me like a glove. But I know the rest of you sons of bitches are going insane. And there's a lot of fucking small businesses that have lost their business and yeah. ain't ever coming back. And we could have been done with it by now if we had just fucking all just taken the drastic steps early on to do so. Doesn't have to be a political issue. Just let's just just get through this damn thing. Yeah. Fuck off. Damn. If I can have the people at the Royal Rumble, son of a bitch. Well, guys, that was Heels Up for this week. Hope you enjoyed the new format. We'll be bringing you again more content, more varied content, and be sure to keep tuning in each week for Heels Up. Got anything? I don't got anything else. Miles? Oh, I'm good, man. Good show. Groovy. All right, guys. Say hi to your mama for me.